look at Davos and you look at all these big wig, rich people, things that happen yeah. around the globe, do you think any of them, one of them even, give a rat's patootie about voting rights? Do you think <sighs> any one of them cares about Medicare for all? Do you think any one of them cares about any of the political discussions that we have whatsoever. The only thing that's never on the voting block, okay, is globalism, whether we're going to invade a country or whether we're going to go ahead and clear markets with the CIA. We're, we, these are the only things that they care about. So anything that has to do with the political theater, I mean, you can go back to, uh, you know, let me use the libertarian uh, angle. You could go back to the Rothschilds and they'll say, I don't care how a nation governs itself. Just give me control of the money, right? I look at this and I say to myself, so much of this pitch battle going on right now really is meant to keep you and I and Jordan and the rest of the viewing population sedated, literally thinking something's going on. They don't care. This is kind of like, Hey, yeah, you kids go, go play, you know, hopscotch or go play video games in the other room. The grownups are out here playing poker. I mean, literally that's, I feel like they're putting us in, in like our recess, a timeout. We're going to go watch some rated G films over here while they, while they tend to the real business of getting off this planet and like, you know, like a nice big spaceship or a nice boat or some sort of an underground bunker. I mean, they don't care about any of the issues we care about. At all. No, they so care about me, all of this. Penis shaped rocket ships going into space that are compensating. And I, it's funny you say that because I've always said this like, what difference does it matter to me if my oligarchs are Russian, Chinese, or, you know, Saudi Arabian, or like, it's just a bunch of people sitting at the top playing Stratego. And, and even within this country, nobody, they don't care if it's Democrats or Republicans because they have them both in their pocket. Like, it doesn't matter. They're all on the same payroll. And Joe Biden doesn't stick up to mansion or cinema because he doesn't want to. I think there's it's a the very theater. important... Yeah, it is theater. And that's why I think it's very important to address this, because I don't think a lot of people really understand, um, you know, when they mention Hillary running in 24, this isn't a, a circumstance where people are like, well, this is what would be good for the country. I think, yeah, Jen definitely needs a hit from that. Um, no, I think that there definitely needs, to, there's something that needs to be said about the political opportunism of the consultant class that permeates all throughout uh, both parties in the sense that they're only concerned about the money. If they think that propping her up is going to be good for their brand or good for their career, even if they know that she is as damaged goods as it can possibly be in politics, they're going to talk about it. And I, I, I'm wondering if you guys think that people are becoming a lot more hip to the game now where it's like, oh, let's revive Hillary Clinton, who's been running for president for 20 years. Like at some point, is it, OK, keeper. this is she's just like keeper. enough already with this. So where do you guys <laughs> think it's stemming from as far as she's concerned? Uh, you want to well, take a crack at it, Jordan? <laughs> uh, I think that I think that Hillary Clinton, you know, Listen, why should a female not have the same uh, corrupt, you know, uh, narcissism as as male politicians? Uh, That's so, so progressive of you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Hillary Clinton has a God complex. She thinks that before she dies, she she should be president. I don't I don't fault her for wanting to be president. I mean, I think she's pretty deplorable in terms of what she stands for. That's she's already uh, she's already out there. Uh, as, I don't know if you saw the headline, but she's blaming the left. Uh, if if already <laughs> if uh, d if Democrats lose the midterms for moving it far too left, which I, I don't even I don't even understand. It's moved further right. That's the crazy part. But um, I think that yeah no I think that really um, from Hillary's point of view I don't know if the Democratic Party cosigns on Hillary uh, 2024, but uh, I think they're still very stuck in this uh, uh, kind of like a store the identity story. Like Hillary, third time's a charm. Like we could finally, you know, bring the bring this back. Like the uh, underdog story, like Rudy. Are you like yeah. saying that? Yeah, no. Or, I'm or honestly, that. honestly, if Trump runs again, which health permitting, it, it seems like he will. Um, you know, her in a head to head, and Democrats might think that that would be a good shot because they could market it as like. Rocky two after he lost to uh, Apollo the first time. So, but 
it's very, very, it's very sad. And honestly, you know, when we talk about this theater here, I want to talk about right now. And Steve and I have talked about this uh, when he comes on right now, you have this bullshit that the economy is booming. Like you literally have, uh, I saw there was an article that Democrats, there was discussion about additional stimulus, but then somebody from Biden's, a bigwig from Biden said, oh, no need, you know, maybe something small for restaurants, but the economy is booming. Yeah, well, go look on Reddit. Go look on Reddit. Go look at the Kroger study that come out. The economy is booming on the blood and frankly, uh, collapse of working class people. Uh, you have people literally that uh, are borrowing money to afford rent. Uh, you have people that are being called in to their shitty low paying job work while they are positive with COVID. Come in anyway. Uh, you have the uh, the CEOs of this country, uh, their, their, their bonuses going much higher as well as their uh, yearly uh, packages and uh, salaries. And you also have um, record profits because they're price gouging, not due to inflation, but just because they can. Actually, I hate to say it, credit to Elizabeth Warren, she just got the Federal Reserve Chair to admit in a hearing, uh, yeah, they're raising prices because they can, not because they have to. So all of this like, oh, theater, oh, will Hillary run again? And now the C CNN is uh, focused on McConnell first Biden because McConnell, McConnell lashed out at Biden for his you know speech yesterday on the filibuster. Um, but meanwhile, there's an economic hunger games going on, a bullshit narrative, the, the economy is booming. A lot of these jobs that have come back are non-living wage jobs, the same hospitality industry jobs that – People couldn't even afford to live off one of those jobs. So uh, sorry for the tangent, but while Hillary Clinton is, you know, uh, dusting off her, uh, you know, what do they call that? The, the leg pants she wore? Um, oh, the pantsuit. <laughs> the pantsuit. Yeah, the, the pantsuit. While she's dusting that off and the Democrats are dusting off the playbook uh, on democracy and voting rights, uh, the rest, uh, the working class, uh, white and black and Hispanic, are taking it more on the chin than they have been in the past. Yeah, Hillary doesn't care. Um, you know what's, I, I don't know if either of you guys know who Brian Kloss is, but we had him on our show. He wrote a book called Corruptible and it talks about the dark triad personalities of a lot of the people that are in leadership and people mm -hmm. like her exhibit all three of the dark triad. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.